yes <laughs> hello and welcome to my youtube channel my name is minna this is my little channel where i talk about knitting mostly and other crafts as well yeah this is my vlog where i share what i'm knitting or making at the moment this is astrid my cat and today is 6th of december it is finland's independence day hence the decoration mm. i thought i am going to talk a little bit about my knits and then i'm going to talk a little bit about how Finland got independent and when and and yeah little bit of that yes I'm drinking tea with some honey or actually this is not tea this is some sort of infusion with no tea but only herbs I think this is with the ginger and lemon and little honey that I added the mug is mm -hmm. i have to check yeah one big finnish maker known anyway. it's big company and this uh, print in the mug uh, there are little uh, cows they are drawn by Finnish artist who goes by artist name Mina Akkirka. And I love them. They look, I don't know, she has really captured the look of, look of a cow, I think. Or uh, I'm not sure what's what's baby cow called. <laughs> it's maybe minus four degrees. It's already getting dark, so I don't have daylight anymore. It's maybe half past three, I think, and I have the artificial light. Let's hope it's enough. So, who would have thought I'd be making another vlog so soon, but I guess I've been knitting a bit. Yes, I am going to... Oh, this happens every time. I am going to first tell what I'm wearing. I am wearing budding. Pattern by Finnish designer Anna Johanna, and the pattern can be knitted as a cardigan or as a sweater. I've knitted it with two yarns held double or together. The other one was Lana Grossa Merino 180, I think. And the other one was Filcola Natilia. I think that's silk mohair blend. And yes, it's really soft and lovely to wear. I unraveled the Lana Grossa from another sweater that had got really stretched. And I don't know, it wasn't... <laughs> very successful in the first place i think i knitted it back in 2017 even or 2018 and i didn't wear it all that much so i unraveled it and look at me now really nice project to make and really lovely nice cardigan and I am even trying to be a bit patriotic with my color choices because Finnish flag is 
blue cross on a white background so blue and white i tried yes but more recent knitting i told in my last episode that and i've been talking about this sweater for my brother a um, few times already and yeah there there i i have some issues but but i think i'm also i might be a, a genius or something maybe that's a bit too much I am a problem solver, if there is such a thing. Hear me out. So, first I made this shirt and someone asked um, a close-up, so I'm trying to show it a little bit closer. Uh, yeah, it's a little loppy shirt, uh, quite big one. <laughs> And I did make it too narrow, so I had to widen it and I made these, okay, I'm going to go these first. I made these pieces to these both sides and the other one is green and the other one is brown. And well, it's wider now. That problem was solved, but it created another problem. And I'm not sure if I said this last time, but I think those lines make, make this look a bit dress-like because there are these white lines. So if there are not those, and even if it's long, because it's in pieces, I don't think it looks like a dress. But when you add these, this long line for, and I don't know why, especially in the side, why I'm not, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, and the fix for that is, is a pocket. But I'll show that in a moment. But this is knitted 5.5 millimeter needles. I've started it from, I'm not sure how close I should be. I've started it from the bottom and I've variegated few yarns, but the actual pattern is really simple. So there is this basic brown yarn and then various green yarns and then some gray and green and here at the top there is kind of a square kind of pattern i hope and the sleeves they are identical so okay I'll, I'll, I'll have those close-ups for you, but here is the sleeve. Yeah. I don't remember the colors <laughs> because parts of this are something I dyed and uh, and some are store-bought colors. I know this brown is store-bought and also this... Oh, well, you cannot tell. But this green that doesn't actually... I think it looks a bit blue or, or grey or it's not very... Like this background color that was store-bought and actually I think the... Uh, neckline is also knitted with that one. So, mm, yeah. Yes, and this is 
just lovely sweater it's so warm it's so cozy it just needs a little uh, fixes also the neckline is quite wide, wide already and i think it's going to it might stretch up even more and that's not something uh, anyone desires i think or not me or my brother who is going to wear this shirt so i think i'm going to add an elastic here so that it it keeps itself somewhat in this form and size yes but the pocket tin so okay i thought that the problem is this okay i'll take this side this long line of this one color that makes that dress kind of appear appearance so the plan is to put a pocket here a big pocket that maybe starts from here and goes somewhere here so technically it's going to be oh my goodness this is difficult like it's going to go a little bit to the side and it's not the most functional pocket but it's not the point <laughs> it's, it's not the point and so that it breaks this but i want it to camouflage itself to this so that the pocket itself won't jump up that much here's what i've knitted and this is also a tube i'm going to cut it in two pieces and here are my two pockets and and I'll try, it's going to look at least something like this. I think I'm going to put it just over the ribbing. So I have no idea what this is going to look like on the camera, but I hope you get the idea. So it breaks the line. So, ta-da! We are back in being a sweater, not a dress. And also, I think, I think this was clever. I think, and I hope that it will work as I see it in my head. So far, so good. Uh, but yeah, I mentioned last time that I i don't like the look of this i know it's a functional thing it 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 works but it's it's just somehow it's it's not fitting i believe i could live with that and maybe my brother could live with that also but it seems so wrong to put like 100 hours to knit a shirt and then or a sweater and then have it fixed like halfway to being a really nice weather so so yes pockets are coming and i dyed a little bit a little oppy for this so this lighter brown is store bought color but as you might be, maybe can see there is also this Mm, darker and maybe a bit more vibrant color that is something i dyed and also all of the greens are my dyes and here are here are my the the colors i dyed i think i did a pretty nice job and i <laughs> if i may say so myself also i think the nature of let loppy how it is spun and how the wool is probably mixed a little bit this was 
actually no you can probably see it this is light this was light gray base which is a just a little bit variegated there are a little darker uh, not spots but a bit some some little dark wool is here and there so i think because of that the end result looks a little bit uh, variegated i think like it's i'm not sure if it's that or did i just have some amazing luck that i got this beautiful <laughs> yarn out of the pot i don't know but same thing happened with this and well i'm not sure but i think i did not try to do anything too fancy i think i just mixed maybe two colors in a kettle like put one color in and then another color in and mix and this is the result yeah and then i just well i probably pre-soaked this but anyway so nothing i have not sprinkled anything or done any anything anything fancy i just dyed in a really basic manner these yards and i don't know it's magic i think <laughs> yeah and sometimes your spells just don't work it doesn't always end up like this yes anyway really happy with these two and i have leftovers so i can do something something with this because these also go together quite nicely i think so i think at some point not too distant future i am going to get this out of my needles <laughs> that's nice so what I still have to do is cut this open or stick it open and then with some beautiful stitch um, attach it mm. and yeah I don't know I I weighed should I put a maybe um cotton uh, canvas or fabric inside like make a little pocket with um, maybe cotton fabric and sew it here and against this so that if something let's say phone is hold in the pocket then the wool wouldn't um, stretch so much that's a thought and it would be really easy to make it shouldn't it wouldn't have to look fancy at all because you can see it because it is in there so yeah that's a thought that's a thought i but let's see let's see this project is just like yeah anyway <laughs> but i'm pretty happy with where i'm at this point so good for me we are <laughs> we can do it oh then and on my last video i mentioned that i started to make a hat a woolly hat for a friend with a leftover yarn that i had from where this is unite that i needed for the same friend and i needed it and it's done and i've already gifted so i don't have it here so here is going to be a picture or few one few pictures and i think it it ended up really nicely i just kept adding colors and then actually a really um unsophisticated unsophisticated manner decreased like from five spots and it created actually a little bit like angly 
result. No one cares. You can't really see it. It doesn't. I mean, it's fine. It's nice hat, and it made me think I should make some leftover hat for myself also because I could really use a hat. Yeah. Last time I also mentioned like I don't have enough enough projects when I started that hat. I still have cat jacket I'm not I uh, there's no progress in that then I have the leg warmer no progress there either the cumulus tea going to be dress no progress and what do you know I started a scarf first I draw just the just the pure pleasure of drawing I draw a few few scarves, stripey scarves, and then I decided one of them looked so nice, I want to knit it. And I started. So, so there we are. The yarn is uh, Fimi's Dyer, oh, there's my hair and cat hair, Fimi's Dyer Ilun Handuduna, or that's the brand. Ilona Korhonen is the maker. And these are single ply merino, 100% merino. I think there is 300 meters in 100 gram skein. And I think you can't really see this uh, online or and I'm not sure if you can see it when I show it to you but um, but the yarns are so pretty and so uh, the um, there is so nice little it's not even little I cannot describe it like really subtle and at the same time visible variegation but somehow it's really balanced it's really beautiful like somehow really and same thing with this I really like how the color how these are dyed I mean even though you might say the the colors itself is like there's probably hundreds and thousands colors like this but it's the it's the detail or the i i can i don't know there is just something there's just something and you cannot see this necessarily in the picture i think yes so the scarf I can put in the photo also of my magnificent drawing and I I am apparently between a line or a row I mean okay let's see let's see okay this is going to be I try something like this so it's just so basic stripes and more stripes and then it's going to have some more stripes <laughs> at the other end <laughs> yeah I think the colors go so beautifully together this reminds me of, I think, sandy beach or, or bottom of a lake with like soft sand or, and sun playing there a little and, well, I don't think we have this colored water in Finland, but somewhere southern places like in tropic, you get that really turquoise um, sea water. All the colors work so differently 
so something like this or something like that and actually the color combination is <laughs> it's quite close to this one i know it's not the same color but anyway brown and tealish uh, green or blue they go nicely together yes i am knitting this with i think 3.5 millimeter needles and it's just a triangle <laughs> there's nothing fancy about it and i think i would like to make i cord edge with that uh with <laughs> with this blue or teal yarn because it would kind of bring it together a little bit yeah i think that's what i'm going to do yes all of a sudden i have a new project <laughs> look at that yes then well that was all my projects but last time i showed yarn that i was planning to use to knit the Dibia Sky sweater from movie Don't Look Up. And these were my colors. And these colors are in the original design. And when I took these out of my closet, I was thinking that I would probably never put together these kind of colors, but if it's in the movie, it probably must look nice. Then I look at the picture and the shirt is brown. It is not orange. And then it all came back to me. I wanted really dark, like, like really black, black. Well, here it is. And I wanted, I wanted pink or this light light red i suppose it's pink to be really like no variegation whatsoever just really i don't know it's kind of like candy or something i don't i i'm so bad at describing colors uh yeah no variegation just plain not too light not too dark not too like neon not like screaming hot pink, but just exactly like this. What's this colored in nature? I don't know. Anyway, and then this. And I remembered I had difficulties to find at the same base and same yarn brand all three colors just as i wanted them so i suppose i just decided that these were so good and i also wanted it to be 100 percent wool and probably some other factors so i ended up taking this orange and now that i think about it like yeah why not but I skinned up one of these and also throw that to my dyeing kettle and made it brown just as it is in the original and look what I what I got. I'm not sure if you can see it from here or where but It's good. I mean, it's, it's, it's good. Oh, yeah, I think it's better. And yeah, this used to be this orange, show it. And there is some brown, I think two different browns, but there was some sprinkling, 
I, I did write it down so that I can hopefully do it again at least close enough so that I can variegate skein uh, balls and make it work so yeah I think this orange just a little bit it comes up here and there but it's really muted it's not like this orange anymore but oh my goodness yes just wanted to show that yeah sometimes spells work <laughs> okay i can't wait to start this short that was all my knitting if that's what you are here in for thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon and if you want to hear about the finnish history and how finland got independent let's talk a little bit about that there were a few um historical uh, events that i had no idea what they are in english so i have i have notes <laughs> to help me a little bit okay there it can go there and let's I think it, oh my goodness, I think it looks like I'm going to burn the plant, but it's actually about five, not five meters, maybe half a meter away from the candles. So I'm not going to burn the plant and I think I'm not going to burn the candle either. I need my one candle. There's, there we go. Oh, also, I have to talk about this finished stuff because it's the day. These are uh, made of Finnish designer. Um, it's a dude or man called Sarpaneva. You know, I cannot remember his first name. Well, Mr. Sarbaneva did design these and he has a lot of really beautiful um, designs. And I've got these from my grandmother, who is already, well, who is not with us anymore. And yeah, it is worth mentioning because uh, because she was born, I think, 1921, and that's four years after Finland uh, got independent. And my grandmother lived to be I think 94 years old so yeah but Finland I'm going to start about the geographical location of Finland it is in northern Europe between Russia and Sweden and we also have a little, well, little, maybe 700 kilometers border with Norway. But our biggest um, neighbors are, are Russia and Sweden. And in south and west, there is the Baltic Sea. So, due to this uh, geographical location Finland has been somewhat a um, war zone of Sweden and Russia 
we've been under both of them a few hundred years back in the day and i think i'm going to start start the history from from um, 1809 when finland was under sweden and russia attacked sweden and gained finland to itself and back then uh, the em the emperor or czar of russia russian empire gave finland an autonomy or uh, it wasn't independence but we got our to to have like a small government and we could decide some of our own politics not everything but we got a lot of rights that were separate from russia and it was i have to check it we were in finnish it's suomen suuri ruhtinas kunta but it was it was the grand duchy of finland and the war when that war it took one year that is called a finnish war just for you to know and then maybe 100 years and a bit more passed and things were pretty okay and let's jump to year 1917 the first world war had started 1914 and Russia, Russia was really struggling. It was fighting with German Empire and Russia didn't do well in the war. And the basic Russian citizens really felt that because there were lack of uh, raw material, there were lack of workforce and you do those, there were no groceries. So the uh, people were really suffering and the people were really disappointed with the emperor and people wanted to stop the stupid war that only yeah only bring or brought misery and also they wanted to get rid of the emperor or um, dictator it and this I'm I'm cutting corners quite a bit, but that was that was due to a longer. Um, yeah, it wasn't only the war, and it's actually really interesting, in many ways. But I cannot talk about every detail, even though I want to. Anyway, people didn't. People were disappointed, and due to that, in 1917 became Russian Revolution and in March the Emperor Nikolai II uh, gave his throne away and there is a word for this I didn't actually even know which is abdication when you give up the crown or or the cha or the star or emperor was abdi abdicated I didn't know that and it I don't think it stuck to my head even now anyway abdication so the emperor gave away his crown and there were temporary government in Russia and then Finland thought that maybe now it's our time because we had been part of Russian Empire and it didn't exist anymore there was some temporary, I cannot remember the name, because there were few Russians before it landed on Soviet Union. But some of the middle Russians, Russias, yeah, Finland thought that we are going to be independent. And then 
the temporary government didn't didn't do well either and there was another another revolution at October and then the Bolsheviks took took the lead and <clears throat> and yes Finland wasn't too happy with the emperor either even though the emperor not the same emperor but the uh, the empire gave gave Finland autonomy uh, there was a um, time period started at 1899 that was called <clears throat> the years of Russification and that tells it all it was Russia trying to push its own ways to Finland even though there was this autonomy and it was trying to take the autonomy back little by little and not not only little by little but like yeah it was bad and we Finland or Finnish people were not happy about that and yeah uh, starting at 1899 yeah years of Russification I just want to tell because I think this is fascinating detail those years in or uh, fin in Finnish language originally were called uh, Routavuodet which translates to ground frost years and more uh, recently the name were changed and they became Sortovuodet which is years of oppression this is not it doesn't sound nice either but the ground frost years or or rota years yeah rota means ground frost and uh, ground frost just a little uh, uh, physics or something <laughs> It happens when there is water in the soil and then the soil freezes so when in general when water freezes it takes more space than it takes when it's liquid so when the ground starts to freeze and there is water the water in the ground lifts the ground up because the water is like growing Kind of and that makes uh, for example road uh, damages and it can get really bad but also uh, uh, farmers can in in fields this is a nice nice phenomenon but in general I think it is considered kind of a nasty uh, nasty phenomenon so I think the Rota years is really there is something so finished in that yeah yeah okay but it's years of depression not depression um oh i just said it anyway years of russification is the uh, official english term for it and official finnish term is sort of what it which is years of oppression I think yes so we were not happy or Finland was not happy so we decided that hey ho we are going to we are going to announce ourselves to be independent and Finland did that in 6th of December 1917 and Finland asked other countries to uh, acknowledge the independence but other other countries said that they want to wait that Russia does it first because it was the former uh, leader so Finland sent a, uh, a party or uh, anyway three men to Russia to, uh, uh, to handle the thing and it was officially um, like uh, Russia officially 
acknowledged Finland in 4th of January 1918, but for some reason the 6th of December 1917 became the uh, this day that we celebrate as an Independence Day because it was the day when it was announced that we are independent. And it was not all fun and games after because uh, because right at the spring of 1980, Finland had really bloody civil war that took a lot of victims. And also, also at 1949, 40, no, 1939, Russia attacked Finland during the Second World War. And yeah, that's a whole other thing. But we managed to keep our independence back then, but with a really high price. Finland had to really pay about that. But we stayed independent. Yes, maybe I am going to have to talk about the civil war and other wars at some other time. But yeah, I wanted to because I was so I had I had forgotten the whole road of war that all the years of depression, that term. There is a well at least in Finland it's famous painting. I'm going to put the name of the um, artist here and maybe the picture also and it it kind of describes the situation before the or back in sort of water or in road of water and that white maiden is finland the country of Finland is called Maiden of Finland. I'm not sure if there is an official term in English for that, but it's because Finnish map looks a bit like a lady with a skirt. So that uh, Maiden is Finland and it's holding the law book. And that two-headed eagle is Russia, who is trying to uh, steal it and the water is uh, stormy and I bet there is a road somewhere in that picture or that painting. Anyway, it's really strong painting. It's really strong painting and yeah, I think everyone who has gone the, to school in Finland knows that painting. Everyone has seen it. So yeah. Also, I want to link link a song that is written or not written um composed by Jean Sibelius who is really famous and amazing Finnish uh, composer he did compose this magnificent song called Finlandia and it was originally um instrumental song there were no words or lyrics for it and i think at some somewhere 30s or 40s some uh, choir chore bunch of singing people asked if a poet finnish poet vea koskenniemi could write lyrics to the Finlandia because the chore choir the singing party wanted to sing the song so Vea Koskeniemi did write lyrics and what lyrics did he write oh my goodness the song is about I think it's about Finland gaining its independence either the me or the singer in the song 
is singing to Finland and saying that oh Finland lock your day is uh, dawning and you did get rid of slavery and hold your head up high and oh my goodness it's just and I think the best way to listen the song well it's really beautiful just as is without singing but if you are going to listen it with uh, vocals you definitely should take something where there is that whole bunch of people and the choir because okay i'm getting overly excited it's just amazingly good song but it's just it's just 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 a good song i can't i can't help it yeah I don't know a lot of other things that Vea Koskeniemi wrote, but I know one quote that has stuck with me because it tells something about stubbornness of Finnish people living here with Rota and everything. Like, I suppose this was the place to be, even though it's, uh, it is what it is. And it goes something like, I have to think about the translation, but in Finnish it goes I think ladulla käyden ladun on vanki, vapa on vain umpihanki. And it means something like if you are skiing according to the skiing road, you are prisoner of the road. And the free thing or the freedom is only in the uh, umbihangi is also a very Finnish word. Umbihangi is a lot of snow where there is no road. And you can imagine it's not it's not easy to ski there or walk there or do anything there, even if you have the gear. So the freedom is only through the umbihangi, the the snow, the huge and huge amounts of snow and yeah. So yeah, that's something Vea Koskenimi wrote. Ah <laughs> oh, yes. I think we Finnish people have some stubbornness issues. Ooh, also random fact. Independence in Finnish language is itsenaisus and stubbornness in Finnish language is itsepaisus. They are kind of close, so it's a, I don't know, it's just a joke or a thing to, uh, instead of saying happy itsenaisus päivä, say happy itsepaisus päivä, happy stubbornness day because I don't know I'm not too patriotic but I think uh, the event in the world that we are actually living next to Russia and Russia is doing what Russia is doing it has made me think more about my grandparents who fought the war and my parents who were born just a little after the uh, second world war uh, fights in finland so uh, i don't know it uh, it makes you think yeah but happy independence day finland and everyone let's keep it this way Thanks for watching, I love that you are there and I hope to see you soon. And if you like to hear some things like this, please let me know. It was nice to do a little history recap. But, see you soon. Bye.